Okay, so this is going to be a review of the Zoom H1 handy recorder. Uh, the lowest cost option of the uh, recorders of this type. Uh, and I'm sure everyone with a T2i is probably going to be interested in this, or uh, some of the newer cameras, the new Nikon, etc., etc. So uh, here's the box and the item. The uh, micro SD card, which is tiny, of course, and uh, manual warranty. The recorder itself and one battery. Packaging simple enough, that's for sure. <laughs> much going on there. And there it is. Let's get it powered up and take a look. So now, uh, so now here we'll go ahead and put the uh, SD card in so we can get started with the review. These things are so tiny, they're just possible to handle. Put that right in there, clicks. There we go, it says it has three hours of remaining time. Now you can see here with a uh, fresh SD card, the one I just put in, uh, it shows three hours, uh, ten minutes approximately, uh, in the WAV setting, WAVE, right here. But if we flip that over, you'll see it changes to uh, 34, 59, so 35 hours almost in, uh, in the MP3 setting, which in a lot of cases is going to be good enough. Um, people say you need to do WAVE, but in reality, not very many people can hear the difference, um, especially with a device such as this, which is not studio quality, but still very good, um, and you're still going to get some pretty good sounding audio out of it. Um, now if we look along the uh, far side of the device here, we can see the USB connector mini, uh, the power slash hold button, the uh, garbage can button, that's become uh, universal <laughs> on uh, all digital cameras, digital devices, so forth. Uh, play, pause, reverse, and uh, the input level and the, the line in. We'll be testing that later. On the front of the device, it is just a screen, and that's it, which is good. Uh, on the other side here, we just have the volume and the SD and the line out. And then on the back, we have the uh, low cut filter, the auto levels, and you are not going to want to turn that on. I think a lot of people who complain about excessive noise on these sorts of devices, they have levels turned to automatic, and that'll crank it way too high. Um, and that's when you get a lot of buzz, background noise, echo, that sort of thing. And then the uh, record format. Um, now one of the neat things with this device is uh, it may be a little it's less expensive than the competition, the H2, the H4N, which of course uh, tons of people use these days, but the dedicated buttons are actually a more professional interface than those other devices I, uh, I just talked about. Um, just not having a menu makes this a lot more professional in the interface department. If you look at uh, like an amateur camera versus a professional camera, you'll notice that, uh, what's the difference? They both do a lot of the same stuff, a lot of the same quality, a lot of the same functions. It's just that the professional uh, one has buttons all over it like this, and you don't have to fiddle with persnickety menus, and the amateur ones have persnickety menus. So that's one uh, area where this, I think, is actually better than its big brothers, and will make this much easier to use uh, when it comes around to that. 
Uh, now, uh, the, probably one of the most important issues, let's test the audio quality of the built-in mics here a little bit. Um, I've set the gain here, or I don't know if you can even call it gain. Uh, I don't know if these are dB or if this is some proprietary measurement, um, but I notice around 44, 43 is when there's no ambient noise in the room I'm in. If you look at the levels here when I stop talking, there's nothing. So I'm going to give it a quick audio test. Uh, I'm, my mouth is about a foot away from the camera. Hit record. And I'll just go testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. Um, uh, just to give you a little idea about how much uh, noise there is on the inputs, background noise, um, the audio processors, that sort of thing. All right, that ought to be good right there. We'll stop that. Now, uh, one, of, one of the other probably big areas where this is going to be used is with uh, plug-in audio devices, of course. Uh, lav microphones, you can hang it on yourself, put this in your pocket, um, sync it up later, although that's kind of a, a pain in the butt. Um, or you could use uh, a plug-in mic, so we'll just go ahead and test that right now. This is uh, very similar to what most news stations use, this, uh, this mic here. And I just have an XLR to mini jack connector here, so let's just give this a go. Plug that into the line in. There we go. Input line, it says. Um, and we're not... So that's uh, definitely lower levels there, so let's turn that up. Until we get something here. Testing, testing. Okay, so this mic has... The uh, input is not that, not a lot of gain going on there, so let's turn it way up here. So we get something. Okay. There we go. All right. Um, so here I'll just press record, and uh, the mic is about a foot away from my mouth, a uh, foot away from my face, as it was before. Uh, and let's just give it a test. Here we go, testing, one, two, three, testing, one, two, three, this is the sound of my voice. Um, and we'll give a few seconds of background noise here, just so we can see later if there's any buzz, any hum, anything like that. Looks pretty flat on the levels there. We'll see. And just to give you a little size comparison here, this is the H1. And then uh, here's the 5D uh, Mark II, which I'm sure uh, you're all familiar with. Although, if you had the 5D, you probably wouldn't need to use this because um, uh, the 5D has manual audio. But just to give you an idea of size differences, there they are next to each other. Um, I just wanted to mention real fast, one of the things I really like about this, and every device needs to have this, listen up, uh, people, <laughs> listen up, sound designers is uh, if you tap this, there's a, this record light here also doubles as a, as a clipping indicator. And I've been on so many shoots where people miss it when it's clipping, and every device needs to have this in the future. This is absolutely critical. Um, really, it is. So just immediately you can tell when it's clipping. Boom. Sound too loud. You get the red light. Done. Uh, really, really nice feature. Uh, definitely needs to have that. Okay, now uh, one of the other uh, big things that people want to know about these uh, handheld audio recording devices is how much wind noise you're going to pick up off of these elements here. Uh, you can notice they're not shielded at all. There's just this cage over it um, to keep you from breaking them off, I suppose. Uh, so let's do a wind test. Um, so you can see the levels are pretty flat here, so the audio is set properly. Um, just hit record there, and let's see how we do here. Okay, you can see it doesn't take much wind to get it up to clipping level there. Um, so you can see just with that light breeze, it's already pretty high up there, and then with a few more rushes, and then right about there, you can see the clipping light go off. Um, 
So yeah, this is going to need uh, some windshielding. Um, but you know that's to be expected. Either use a you can use a plug-in uh, mic with a better windshielding, or you know some aftermarket device like this. Or I think the the kit that they sell for this um, uh, has a windscreen too. Um, it's just something to keep in mind. For a non-windy room, it'll be good. But otherwise, watch out. So anyway, that completes this review of the Zoom H1 Handy Recorder. Alrighty, everyone. Have a good day.